What is up, assholes? Welcome back to another match in opening night trivia. We are here today with some legends, some legacy players, no longer the rookies, people who are here to gun for that title against Jake Meltzer, uh, someone who we just saw pretty recently, uh, Alex. I'm, I'm stressed. I'm tired. How are you doing? I'll tell you how I'm doing. I'm feeling undefeated. 100% <laughs> win rate at Ontel. 100% scientifically proven. How are you? And I am feeling defeated. <laughs> Speaking, I mean, neither of these players are undefeated, but they have lost some some top tier talent. Uh, Caleb Bowman, after after his unfortunate loss to Bill, to Bill Cariola last year uh, in the uh, first title picture, gunning for revenge. Uh, Peggy Gubbins losing to Bill and Jake, other people who actually yeah, people people who just like want revenge on Bill, I guess, uh, and both having very dominant wins on their record. Uh, they scare me, genuinely scare me. I'm very scared about how today is going to go because this could be a very high-scoring match. Uh, that's what I hope. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, these two come with a reputation of sorts, and I've come to see that firsthand, stepping out of my usual geek spotlight to enter a more uh, well-rounded uh, state of mind. Exactly. Uh, speaking of these players who terrify me, I'll bring in the one who scares me the most, uh, Caleb Boatman and his manager, Caleb Coho. Um Got the new fit for you both. How you feeling? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm here to represent my client, Caleb Boatman, today for the crime of murder. Um, just going to get that out of the way now. Uh, there's going to be multiple uh, examples of murder that you see throughout this entire season. Uh, he didn't do it. Uh, you have visual video evidence of him committing murder. Those that are is, clearly doctored. Those folks. are clearly doctored. They're trying to steal his wins from him. It's video shop. Exactly. Like for video. Uh, it's all it's all just uh, Meltzer with uh, fancy video editing, trying to make sure that his uh, his uh, killer doesn't come and take his belt from him. It's uh, like Meltzer using like the uh, Irishman de aging technique. Exactly. It's just it's <laughs> it looks shitty, and uh, we can prove that it's not us. Uh, but today, uh, to today we're playing Peggy, who uh, beat Doc. Uh, really didn't beat Doc. Uh, questions beat Doc. Because uh, producers, not a five. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we're going to get revenge today. We're going to get revenge uh, for Doc, and we'll get revenge for everyone on the way. We'll probably I'm getting revenge for Doc, but for a different thing, because Peggy said something bad about the apartment. I don't really know, but that made Doc a sad boy. And Doc that did really hurt Doc. Doc. That, that made Doc a sad boy. So that did make Doc a sad boy. I have two very quick questions for you. Sure. What are your thoughts on stones, and does the glove fit? Stones very much um, fall into the Nico Suave Regoli department. If you'd like to take any questions about geology, we send it to him. He's our geologist. Uh, but uh, to answer the second question about the glove, to quote uh, O.J. Simpson, I'm not saying I did those murders, but if I did them, I would have looked cool while I was doing them. The glove don't fit. You must have quit. Representing books. Thank you. We'll talk to you uh, in a second. Um, let's talk to the non-murderers here, hopefully at least, uh, Peggy and our manager, Christina, who is not on the desk today. How are you both doing? I'm great. First, I just want to thank Boatman for doing such great things with his hair. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed, fresh cut for my girl today. So like he knew what he was doing. So he's looking fresh for all of us. So everyone in the audience, you are welcome. I'm confused why we're talking about um, the champion right now because I don't see I don't think Meltzer's here, so I don't even know why we're we're bringing him up. But my girl's here, and uh, yeah, she really did beat Doc because she knew the answer to the question. So like that's kind of how things work here. If you know the answers to the question, you get to win. So we already know Bowman's beatable. We can blame the internet all we want, but I mean, you know, and we're football fans. Any given Sunday. Any given Monday, we're going to win this because we're just great. And that's how it is because that's what we do. Anything you got to add, Peggy? Ah, as this might be my final fan league match, I think it's apropos that I am playing against the man I contacted first to join the fan league. So come up, May. He wants my scalp. Let's see if he can take it. Let's go. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh I, I, I see you in the, in the, in the back, Boatman, yes. Any given Sunday or Monday, unfortunately, today is a Tuesday. Uh, we'll have to see how Peggy plays on the rest of the days of the weeks. 
Um, these two scare me. I'm ready to play and just watch absolute decimation of these questions. Yep. I was standing as still as possible, so Christina couldn't see me. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm also ready. Let's do this. Okay. Intro to think first. With a record of one win, one defeat, and one technical knockout. It is the man who haunts my dreams, Mr. Caleb Boatman. And his opponent. A record of two wins, two defeats, and one knockout. The woman who every day of the week I would hire to be my interior designer. It is Miss Peggy Gubbins. I will, I will miss that background. That background is like easily the best setup of anybody. They played games on a Tuesday this season. Let's go. All right. I don't know how football works. I okay. Here is how round number one works. Round number one is known as the whiteboard round. You'll receive 10 questions in a variety of movie trivia categories. Each question is worth one point after I ask the question. You'll have 20 seconds to write your answer down. After the 20 seconds, you'll both present your answer and speak it. Each correct answer is worth one point. If you get all 10 correct, you get a bonus question at the end of the round. For the duration of this match, you have three repeats and one challenge. Caleb, are you ready? Peggy, are you ready? Let's do this. Let's fucking do this. Alex, can you hit them with the first question? It would be my honor. Your first question will come from the category of action adventure. What 90s action film has supporting performances from Keith David, Peter Stormare, Michael Clark Duncan, and Owen Wilson? I think you should have gotten more time to sleep today. I mean, that's what it is. I slept like three hours last night, and that's all I'm going on. I'm on vacation this whole week. Oh, I barely left bed this whole time. I've, I've been watching Star Wars all week, and it's just a slog. The good ones or the bad ones? All of them. Oh. Four, three, two, one. Boatman? I hated this movie. Armageddon. Peggy? I cried at this movie. Armageddon. Both are correct. <laughs> the next question comes in the category of animated. Animated movies. Eugene Levy and Diane Keaton voice the parents of which Pixar character? If you had famous parents, who would you want them to be? Oh, I would love to be the the weird kid of of Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. That's actually I, honestly that'd be a fun family. Yeah. Okay, but if I want a dad, I want to be Albert Brooks because he feel like, I feel like he'd just be fun to just like come like come of age with. Nah, get me in Guardians, baby. <laughs> Three, two, one. Peggy. I couldn't think of anything, so I just wrote Darla. And Boatman. Dory. That is correct. Ah! I gotta see that still. All right. Your next question will come from the category of horror. What kind of sea creature is hunting down Haley in 2019's Crawl? Okay. I have a fun, like, internet thing for you. I saw something, like, months ago where technically you're immortal, except for there's a snail that follows you your entire life, and when it touches you, you die instantly. Would you take that risk? Yeah, because uh, as everybody knows that has met me, I am just dripping with salt. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Escar, go fuck yourself. One. <laughs> Omen. Between two, I said alligator. And Peggy. I also said alligator. That is correct. I'm so glad I didn't write my. <laughs> I think crocodiles are more land based. I think that's the difference. Not sure. Mm -hmm. though. I, we don't know either. It's like turtle tortoise. Uh, I don't know. Personally. I think the main difference is the snout. Is that what it is? Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, nose for uh, for killing. Next question comes in the category of crime. The first heist in Heat centers around Macaulay's crew robbing from what? Speaking of Heat, we should note that Caleb Boatman's DMs are open. So if you. <laughs> If you have those, I was gonna mention. <laughs> Bob may be riding on the ocean, but he is dropping some oh, wow. thirst traps for the audience today. <laughs> Trimmed up the beard a little bit. Hey, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Peggy, it's been forever since I've seen this one. No clue. I put U.S. Treasury and Boatman armored car. That is correct. Yep. 
All right, your next question will come from the category of famous actors and actresses. Which Oscar winner appears in American Flyers, Swing Vote, and 13 Days? This match going to air in more or less than 13 days. 13 days, the amount of time I'd want to spend with Caleb Boatman, because again, his DMs are open. <laughs> It's the last one, I promise. And the audience goes mild. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Boat? Kevin Costner. And Peggy. Kevin Costner. Both correct. Next question comes in the category of war. A farewell to arms is set during what war? See, if you're friends with Chewbacca, you should also be giving a farewell to arms. So you rips them off. You've been in the Star World Star Wars. I've, I'm in too long. deep. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. Four. Three. Right, that does two, the soundtrack. One. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> Peggy. I put Vietnam. And Boatman. It's one or the other. I said World War One. That is correct. I only know that because I read the book in high school. <laughs> you never read it. All right. Uh, next question. That's like flying is Vietnam. Damn it. Movie release dates. What year did Hard Candy, The Descent, and Capote come out? Mm. I feel like Butman's very familiar with Hard Candy because he worked with old people. Like I feel like he just has pockets full of butterscotch. Fun fact: I used to work at a retirement home, and hey. one time I had to help escort out a dead body. Can I get a repeat of the question, please? Please. <laughs> Is that? Yep. Uh, once again, for movie release dates, what year did Hard Candy, The Descent, and Capote come out? This match descending into this, madness. I was thinking Descendants. Glad I heard the repeat, but that lot of good is going to help me. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Vote. Nobody wants to watch Capote on a Monday night, 2005. Peggy. Nope. <laughs> I don't know what that reference to, but Boatman is correct. Uh, that is a reference to a movie battleground match. Oh, man. Next question comes in the category of biopics. Name three of the five actors who play presidents in Lee Daniels' The Butler. I am a huge fan of this movie. We'll see if that holds up whenever I rewatch it. <laughs> Me too. Also, I'll give you a little bit more time because I need you to have more than one. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I also like to apologize to Caleb Bowman. Uh, Adelaide gave me shit about going horny for Man on the Boar Queen. I I still don't get it. I don't. Twelve pack. The twelve pack. That, oh, like, just me. It's not just me. I it is just you. About it. No, you it's okay. That's it. It. David Four, Garcia, Jay Burns. Three, two. One. Peggy? I only got as far as James Marsden and then I guess Sam Rockwell. Boatman. Lee Schreiber, James Marsden, and Robin Williams. That is correct. Yep. Also would have affected John Cusack and Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman as Ronald Reagan, which is an awful casting choice. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. Your next question, your penultimate question, I believe. Yes. It will come from the category of scores and soundtracks. What music film features the songs Tonight I'm Gonna Rock You, Hellhole, and Give Me Some Money? Hmm. All things I have yelled at 2 a.m. in my lumpy apartment. I have a question. Yes. Tonight I'm Gonna Rock You? Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Just scream into the void. Hopefully someone answers. Sure. Five, four, three, What's two, fucking movie? one. Vote. Complete guess. This is Spinal Tap. And Peggy. <laughs> I ran out of time, so I just quickly wrote Rent. Boatman is correct, but this is Spinal Tap. Nice. As we get to your final question, Boatman remaining perfect in round one, as we go to the category of plot summary. Name the film from the plot summary. 
George and Nina Banks are the parents of young, soon-to-be-wed Annie. George is a nervous father, unready to face the fact that his little girl is now a woman. The preparations for the extravagant wedding provide additional comic moments. That was wordy, because IMDb is just annoying. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's, this is going to be a spoiler, but Boatman went right to the board. Mm. Yeah. Perfect round. Well, we're going to him second, so we got some anticipation to build up. Anticipation. <laughs> Five, four. Great movie. Three. Yeah. Two, okay, movie. One. Fuck you, Peggy. Great movie, Father of the Bride. And Caleb. A lot of Diane Keaton tonight, Father of the Bride. <laughs> yeah. Perfect round for Caleb Boatman. One of three now. Yeah. Shacker. Uh, everyone says I'm the biggest movie nerd they know, and it's not even close to the ones that I know. All right, your bonus question. Congratulations is what is Frank Cross's job in Scrooged? He's a TV executive. That is correct. From 11 to four, as we head into round number two. Round number two is known as the deep cuts round. Before this match, each player gave their opponent a movie to study. Uh, for, the, for the movie that they chose, they'll be getting one point per question. For the movie their opponent chose, they'll be getting two points per question each player will be answering all five questions in each of the two movies on their whiteboard once again 20 seconds write it down present at the end of 20 seconds uh boatman since you're in league we'll bring in your manager to talk to him uh if you guys would like to get your your movie first or second uh i say we go uh my movie second since that's the one i just retain more from so the first one just fresher well, about quick question what's the first letter of my name okay uh, what's the second letter of my last name? Oh, there you go. Cool. All right, um, thank you. I don't like that. That's not a nice thing. <laughs> so, just for clarity, we are doing Family Stone first, Sword in the Stone second. Okay, thank you. Uh, and yeah, so I'll be giving you your questions in the Family Stone. When Ben first arrives at the house, Sybil says that this year, what is not going to be optional? I have nothing fun to say. Just, I, last night I watched this and it was just a lot of pain. Maybe pain's optional. Hmm. Five, four. Only in three, some places. Two, one. Peggy? Close. And Boatman? Clothing. Both correct. In her long winded story about how Meredith first met Everett, he says he was going to see one of the largest what in the world. Oh, oh God, I'm not wearing a crown. <laughs> you got time. Five, four, three, two, one. Vote. Metal Buddhas. And Peggy. Metal Buddha. Both correct. What is the movie Meredith has to present when playing charades? Didn't find the crown. Did just snap my wraparound headphones, though. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. I will have to uh, it at some point this week. If you subscribe to the Ontel Patreon, we can get Alex new headphones whenever that happens. We don't have one. Please. Five, four, three, two, one. Peggy? The bride wore black. And Boatman. Incredibly awkward moment in the movie. The bride wore black. That is correct. <laughs> What is the name of the bar where Meredith met Brad? Five, four, three, two, one. Boatman? I got nothing. And Peggy? O'Malley's. That is correct for one point. And your final question. Finish this quote. She has got this throat clearing tick. It's like she's blank looking for three words. I feel weird. It's it's like if you don't pick a geek movie, you can actually get some of the <laughs> answers. Hey. 
Is that, is that digging me or you? Because we both did that. I mean, one of us won. Um, just oh. Oh. <laughs> undefeated, Five, baby. Four, three, two, one. Peggy, digging for clams. And Boatman, I said digging up clams. Peggy is correct. Uh, I believe it's now nine to sixteen. Heading into Boatman's choice of the of the sword and the stone. Uh, yep. And your first question in Sword in the Stone. At the beginning of the film, how mu how long of a wait does Merlin say he has until Arthur arrives? Mm. My first contribution to this round is uh, I really don't like this movie. Both of this week I actually sort of hate. I should have seen it. Instead, I watched Singing in the Rain. Good pick. Very good pick. A great pick. I'll have it in my head for the rest of the year, probably. Five, four, three, two, one. Boatman? Half an hour. And Peggy? Half an hour. I have how, I have, I have hour and a half. I, that might have been a, a incorrect it's, thing it's I wrote half down. An hour. It's half an hour. Okay. I believe you both challenge, except cool. Great. <laughs> Let's get the points. <laughs> glad, glad we did that uh, painlessly. I'm used to geek challenges. They take much longer. Uh, question two. After Arthur <coughs> and Merlin are turned into fish, Merlin explains that Arthur is between two planes. What are the names of the two planes? Oh, yeah. So, uh, funny uh, hosting thing. Uh, the thing I got most from Singing in the Rain, make him laugh. Something I'm bad at. <laughs> <laughs> the best number in the movie is singing, is make them laugh. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Peggy? Was it the air in the ground? Boatman. Ceiling and floor. That is correct for one. Ah! All right. Third okay. question What skill does Archimedes teach Arthur when he learns he cannot read? Five, four, three, two, one. Bowman? The alphabet or ABCs. Peggy? I wrote the alphabet or two, right? I think we can accept that. Yep. All right. All right. Fourth question. What is the one thing Madame Mim says she hates? Should have read these questions beforehand. My incredibly awkward pronunciation of Madame. Mm -hmm. I'm doing. Hey, you're, you're, you're being formal. You're, you're giving her respect. You know, ma Madame. I hate that. I hate that I did that. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Peggy. Sunlight. And Boatman. Sunshine. I believe the exact sunshine. quote is sunshine. I'm inclined to give it to both of them because we didn't need the exact answer. I sure, yeah, that's okay. That's a, yeah, both get the points. Uh, thank you for making me feel like I was included in that decision. Uh, fifth question, final question in this Sword in the Stone during the tournament, London Arthur forgot Sir Kay's. Oh my goodness, during the tournament, London Arthur forgot Sir Kay's sword. Where did he say he left it? I believe it's during the tournament in London. During the tournament, London. In okay, I we just we, we I'll rephrase this because I think again converting into converting questions just went wrong. During the tournament in London, Arthur forgot Sir Kay's sword. Where did he say he left it? Okay. And you don't do not need an exact quote here, right? No. Okay. Although I will not I will not accept somewhere. <laughs> Let's look at MC or nowhere is also an acceptable answer sometimes. Character Five, in the movie. Four, three, two, one. Peggy? Said he left it at the inn? And Boatman. Back at the inn. 
both are correct. Yep. Unless I am mistaken, the score is now 22 to 17. Heading into round number three. Okay. All right. All right. So round number three is known as the filmography round. Each player will get three questions uh, for two points. I will give you the year of release, the lead actor of the film, and the genre. For three points, I will give you the year of release, the, direct, or the, the director, and the plot keywords. And for five points, you will pick two between direct, director, actor, supporting actor, genre, and plot keywords. We will go until all questions have been asked or a player is mathematically eliminated. Uh, at first, I'll bring Ann Bowman since he is still in the lead, or bring in Bowman's manager. Uh, would you guys like to have question one or question two? Set Which two. number you like more? Set one or set two? Set two. Set two. All right. Great. And for fairness sake, I will bring in uh, Peggy's manager as well. You guys can talk to each other while we get this. How you doing, Mama? Down five is not bad. Yeah, Had a good. rough round one. Did okay in round two. Yeah, you're good. Got, got a couple steals in there, so feeling all right. Yeah, Depends on the, and on the bright side, like a lot of chicks are going to be sliding into Boatman's DMs later. <laughs> <laughs> now, does he have a Tinder? Can we link that onto the YouTube? <laughs> You know, I think, I think you can actually link Tinder accounts. I'll be sure. I'll be sure to get that before the match. Ends. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Also, guys, like my clients' DMs are also open. Just saying. We're just gonna spread the love. Let's spread it. You know what I'm saying? And P.S. I said Monday because it matches normally air on Monday. You got. Well, this I, I think. I think this one comes out on Wednesday, but I don't. Whatever. Whatever. Teaching the pandemic. Let's do this thing. You got this. Let's go. <laughs> round right. three. Bring it. What can right, Cole explain about here? Her round three questions in set number one. Sure. Just a quick uh, <laughs> warning. Word of warning: If you might have to watch the Family Stone, so uh, mixed bag, mixed bag. <laughs> um, so Peggy had set two or set one. Set one. Set one. Lovely. Peggy, are you ready? Sure. Let's go. All right. For two points, the year is 1960. The actor, and the genre is thriller. You cut out. Yeah, I, I'm going to oh, need to take that. Sure. Uh, the year is 1960. The actor is Anthony Perkins, and the genre is thriller, mystery, and horror. Psycho. That's correct for two points. Hmm. Grows now 22 to 19. Three points to Ty Boatman, pushing him to his two-pointer. Yep. So... Okay, out here, bitch. Sorry, that's <laughs> oh, not, not kidding. <laughs> Not, not Boatman, the other one. <laughs> For three points, the year is 1989. The director is Cameron Crowe, and the plot keywords are disapproving father, underachiever, valedictorian. Five, four, three, two, one. Peggy? Oh, is it still me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Say anything. I'm sorry. I thought okay. it was. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> okay. So the score is now 22 all. <laughs> and we had to. Boatman. I say that like he's not even reacting. Like, how does he not know this one? <laughs> I was like, how does she not know this? <laughs> this is saying anything is such a Peggy movie. Right? I'm just like, come on. I'm like, he's not even moving. <laughs> All right. Boatman, for two points. Your year is 1962. Your lead actor is Peter O'Toole. And your genres are adventure, biography, and drama. Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> I think that's a reference to we, to we didn't start the fire, but that is correct. <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia, British Beatlemania, Old Miss John Glenn. <laughs> One of these days, he'll sing the, oh, he'll sing the whole song on the stream. I fucking know it. He will. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I, I will never sing the other version uh, that I made that one. You time. should, though. You really should. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> the score is now 24 to 22. Five points back to Peggy. If she hits this, 
<laughs> but we'll need to hit, we'll need to hit his three to tie the game. If she misses, Kayla Boatman will win this match. All right. So for five points, the year is 2014. I, I'll bring your manager to help you out here. Yes, please. All right, Mama, the oh. usual? For yeah, the usual. But wait, what's the score again? Like, where is, 24 where to 22. 24 to 22. So you got to hit, yeah, you got to hit this to force his hand. Okay, okay. So yeah, we'll do the usual. Yep. See how we roll. All right. Yeah. Lead actor plot keywords, if you would be so kind. All right. All right. So once again, from the year 2014, the lead actor is Domhnall Gleeson, and the plot keywords are pop band, attempted suicide, and a mask. Five, four, three, two, repeat. one. Second repeat. Right. The year is 2014. The lead actor is Domhnall Gleeson, and the plot keywords are pop band, attempted suicide, and mask. Five, four, three, two. I'll one. take the last one. That should be right. last repeat. All right. So the year is 2014. The lead actor is Domhnall Gleeson, and the plot keywords are pop band, attempted suicide, and mask. Not ringing a bell. Not that one. Five, four, three, two. I have no idea. One. Rocket, Rocket Man is not even the same right year. <laughs> and yep. your winner, Caleb. Good game, Peggy. Looking for Frank. Never seen it. <laughs> okay. we'll I had a our... classmate in high school that like swore that was the greatest movie ever made. It's a really good movie. All right. We'll talk, we'll, talk to our, we'll talk to our winner today first. Uh, Caleb and his manager, Caleb. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. It's Tuesday. Yeah, Check your clock. In the room, everyone. Uh, clock. That's a Tuesday. Uh, I own that copyright, Peggy, but nice try. 24 points is a very oh, that's, a fork that's, a, that's a fork song, motherfucker. What the fuck? That's a fork song, motherfucker. The forks have Oh, boy, that's a Tuesday. Okay. Boatman, 24 points. Very strong game today. Now one of the three people to get a perfect round one. How are you feeling? I mean, good. Uh, nice to get a, a perfect round one. Uh, I am kicking myself for digging up clams and digging for clams. <laughs> Change that one word. I don't know if that even makes a difference, but I'm. I that that makes me sad that I messed up on that. Um, but sort, uh, I'm happy I hit every sword in this film question because I am obsessed with that movie. And yeah. Uh, Koho as manager, how, how are you feeling? Another one? I mean, this is just throw another one. We, I've said this a million times about about throw another one on, on the pile. It's just another one. Uh, we'll take all the wins uh, till we get all the all the titles. Uh, all right. and, with, and when we get the next title, it just goes in the gauntlet. It's another one. Would would you like to know your another one? Sure. Who's the next victim? Caleb Boatman, your next opponent will be Anthony Tisdall. <laughs> this is the revenge you... tour. Fucking line, line them up. Let's go again. All right. Great. Uh, we, we will uh, see you in your next match. We have we now have our second place winner today, uh, Peggy. <laughs> and I, I don't like saying loser. It's too negative. <laughs> no, Peggy, I, manager. Lost, I lost fair and square. That's all right. I never also, seen my five pointer but i think i had a nice decent comeback after having a rough round one so you had a nearly perfect round two you only missed one question again you are one of the best round two players we currently have 
And at this point, we'll know if you're gone or not. There's no way you're not going to get drafted, but this is a hell of a game to go out on. Yeah, I wish I wish would have gone out with a W, but hats off to Boatman. He played a hell of a game. Excellent round one. I mean, what can I say? He, he played a hell of a game. Well, first, I'd like to say that I apologize that I uh, – I'm not a subpar musician to provide my own music. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Coho. Um, if you got to lose to somebody, it's always good to lose to one of one of the greats. Um, you know, I love you, and I'm proud of you. And anyway, this match would have gone wouldn't change my feelings. So that works. You're gonna yeah. do you're gonna do big things, babe. We're, we're both about to do big things, baby. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. My, my things might be loud, but I don't know if they'll be big. But yeah, <laughs> you, you guys, you guys are going off to green, not greener, but you're going to more green pastures, and hopefully, success follows you. And again, <laughs> this was an amazing performance today. You should not hang your hat on it. You played incredibly, and if this is how you're going to go, you you have nowhere to go but up to actually beat and dominate the, the showdown. Yeah, I mean, I've only been doing this a year. How long has been has Boatman been doing it? And I nearly got it. I nearly got it. Nowhere to go but up, baby. Boom to tomb, Caleb Boatman in the fan leagues. Uh, we will be talking to you both. Uh, actually, we won't. That was the end. Fuck. <laughs> I actually, uh, that's sad. Uh, you know what? Today was an incredible game from both players. Uh, I came into this very stressed, very tired. Now I'm awake. I am full of energy because you know what? Opening night proves to some incredible fucking players, incredible fucking matches. And today was an example of both. Yeah, I agree. I think that one of the things that people have to look out for with Peggy is that she comes super prepared to any one of her matches. Uh, didn't start off super hot in that first round, but she made a comeback. She pushed all the way to the five-pointer, and if she had hit that, who knows what would have happened. Uh, Caleb Boatman, it's another one. Another one for the pile, indeed. Uh, he He's never short of wins, uh, and I'm pretty sure he's just right back into title contention. Uh, the match with Anthony going to be really exciting. Uh, but that is a story for another time. It absolutely yeah. will be. So everybody, thank you for watching Opening Night Trivia. Uh, thank you for thank you to Christina, to Coho, to Peggy, to Boatman, and Christina again because she deserves it. She'll get it at the end of here as well. And for Alex and for me and myself, I'm Adelaide. Hi, hello. Thank you for watching Opening Night Trivia. Stay inside. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wash your face. Support your local teachers. Um, you'll be seeing this, I think, like around Valentine's Day, which means like show them some love. I know this is back in elementary school, but like get them like one of those like that box chalk. It's like, hey, appreciation because you deserve it. You don't get enough credit and be sure to be there for them because digital school fucking sucks. We'll see you next week for another match. To the flip side.